What's up? This is John Breyer, KG4AKV, and I just want to quickly introduce this first ham TV school reception with audio. There has been ham TV with audio in 2014 when it was first tested, and maybe a one or two other times, but never with a school contact. And this is probably the first time it's been released publicly with audio because when they use it, uh, this is a Norwich schools contact, when they used it at the time, the they couldn't use the audio because it's received remotely and then transmitted through the internet which introduces a delay which would confuse people um, using it as they also use the VHF where there's no delay. But recording it and editing it later we can sync it all up and make it look and sound great and that's what I did and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching this is John Breyer KG4AKV73. GB1SS the Golf Bravo 1 Sierra Sierra this is GB2 CNS, Golf Bravo 2 Charlie November, Sierra, listening and standing by for a scheduled contact with the International Space Station. Hello, Golf Bravo 2 Charlie November, Sierra. This is Golf Bravo 1 Sierra, Sierra. I reach you 555. I'll be over. Hi, Tim. This is Tim, M6 HDJ. Are, are you ready for your first question? Over. Great to be talking to you in Norwich, and yes, I'm ready for my first question, over. Hi, this is Maddie. What do you do if you cut yourself really badly in space? Over. Hi, Maddie. Good question. We do actually use some sometimes up here, so we do have to be careful. If we get a really bad cut, then we could actually give ourselves some local anaesthetic and stitch it up uh, with the help of some doctors back in uh, ground control if we need to. Over. Hi, this is Austin. Are there any protocols or guidance in place if George Clooney comes knocking on the front door as he did in the film Gravity? Over. Hi Austin, well as far as I'm aware we're the only six human beings in space up here so if anybody comes knocking on our hatch I'm not opening it. Over. Tim, it's Kieran M0XTD. We have you on Ham TV. Give us a wave. Here's your next question. Hi, this is Sophie. What experiment would you like to add to your mission based on the experiences you have had? Over. Hi, Sophie. Um, I would like to see us doing more of the medical research, um, you know, investigating some more vaccines and looking into uh, new drug methods as well. I think that's some of the most exciting research we're doing up here. Over. Hi, this is Max. In what ways does the lack of natural sunlight and fresh air affect you on the ISS? Over. Hi Max, I love opening the windows in the cupola when I'm in uh, Node 3 or in the uh, Japanese module. I love the sunshine coming through the windows and it does make a difference. It does kind of brighten up your day and make you feel better. And you just get used to the fact that we see so many day and night cycles. Over. Hi, this is Charlotte. How do you get changed in space when your clothes go everywhere? Over. Hi Charlotte, they do go everywhere. We have to use bungees. Uh, we bungee our clothes down so they don't float off and you don't lose them. Over. Hi, this is Eden. One of the experiments you are conducting in space is to measure fluid shifts in the body. In what way does this help us back on Earth? Over. Hi Eden, that's a great question. Fluid shift really kicks off the whole process of the changes to our body. It's because of the fluid shift we get greater pressure in our head and we start to lose uh, bone density as well. So that triggers all the changes and it's by changing things in our body that we can learn about our body and we can investigate these things. Over. Hi, this is Thomas. With the basic design of the current spacecraft dating back decades, where do you think the next leap forward in spacecraft technology will occur? Over. Hi Thomas, yes, I mean we're playing with the basic rules of physics and gravity here and laws of motion so um, I think that we're going to see big changes to our spacecraft in terms of our transit to Mars and transit to Moon um, but in terms of getting to low Earth orbit I don't think we're going to see many big changes that, that we have in current spacecraft design, over. Hi, this is Emily. How different was the, was the training compared to the experience of actually launching into space? Over. Hi Emily, the training was so good that it really prepared us for launching into space and there are very few differences between what we were training for on ground and how we live and work up here in space. Over. Hi, this is Millie. 
With improving technology on Earth, are there experiments that you are currently carrying out in space that could one day be repeated on Earth? Over. Yes, there are loads of uh, experiments up here that we're doing that could be repeated uh, on Earth. I think that it's going to be a long time before we um, manage to sort of counter gravity for a long period of time on Earth. So we use parabolic flights and drop towers. But the benefit of being up here in low Earth orbit is, of course, we have microgravity continuously. So we can do those experiments for a very long time. Uh, but we do repeat the experiments back on Earth, of course, to see the changes, to see what's difference between space and Earth. Over. Hi, this is Erin. Which materials being developed with the electromagnetic levitator will have the largest impact on the development of greener living? Over. Hi Erin. Well, I think the metal alloys are the one area of research that are going to have the big impact on greener living um, because that will affect how our engines are designed um, and uh, in particular our commercial aircraft turbine blades and turbine engines, for example, which will cut down fuel production and cut down fuel usage and uh, have a good impact in, in aviation. Over. Hi, this is Maddie asking you this question. Since being in space, what has been your most amusing dream? Over. Hi Maddie. Do you know, I, I haven't dreamt much up here in space, uh, and when I do, I dream of Earth. I haven't yet dreamt of being in space, um, and I think it's because we, we sleep quite heavily up here, actually. I, quite, I sleep quite well here in space. Over. Hi, this is Austin asking Libby's question. If everyone in Britain turned their lights on and off at the same time, would you hear it from space? Over. Hi Austin, yes you definitely would see it, you know we would see a, a small village if you turned your lights on and off, it's amazing that um, we, the lights really stand out very well from space um, and certainly a, a major city turning their lights on and off would stand out very clearly, over. Hi this is Sophie asking Ella's question, which part of the earth do you like orbiting over the most and why, over. Hi Sophie, uh, I love orbiting over Africa, it just looks beautiful from space, it's like flying over a, a canvas of art um, and also North, Northern Canada is beautiful, especially right now with all the ice and the, uh, even the sea is frozen up there, over. Hi, this is Max asking Amy's question, with sunrise and sunset occurring 16 times a day on board the ISS, does it have any noticeable effect on your body clock, over. Hi Max, that's a great question. Yes, it does. You know, if, I, if I'm looking in the cupola late at night when it's bright sunshine, it does take me a while to get to sleep, uh, so I try not to do that. You have to kind of try and trick your body that it's night time when it's time to go to sleep. Over. Hi, this is Charlotte asking Mimi's question. How does being in space make you relate to your place in the universe? Over. Hi Charlotte, that's a great question. You know, I mean, being up in space gives a different perspective and it makes you realise how vast the solar system is, how vast the universe is, and also it makes you realise that our planet, uh, you know, it has no borders, it's got massive weather systems that uh, are affect all continents, and so it does give you that perspective of, of the planet as a whole. Over. Hi, this is Eden asking Bruno's question. Is there a song or a piece of art that you think reproduces the feeling of being in zero gravity? If so, which one? Over. Hi Eden, well I, as nothing particular comes to mind but you know some of those pictures where things look uh, different upside down, for example it might be a beautiful woman one way up and a, an old haggard woman what, the other way up. I think that's great because it, it makes you realise in space of course we have a different perspective depending on which way up we are. Over. GB2CNS returning. That was fantastic, thank you. Everyone here would like to say a big thank you. This is GB2CNS handing back to handing back to GB1SS for the final. GB2CNS, often clear. It's been wonderful talking to everybody in Norwich this afternoon. Have a great day and thank you for those brilliant questions. Uh, goodbye from the International Space Station. Out.
Well done, guys. Absolutely brilliant. I think they deserve a huge round of applause. <laughs>